Hey everybody, this is Crypto Quantum Mental. Today I'm going to teach you how to identify and trade support and resistance levels. I'm going to teach you multiple methodologies to come up with these levels, which should add to your confidence that they will hold. So first, what exactly is support and resistance? Support is a price for which the asset has a difficult time falling through. Resistance is the opposite. So think support is a price floor and resistance is a price ceiling. Support's usually a buy zone. Resistance is generally a sell zone. So uh, some key factors you need to remember. The whole reason why support and resistance generally works is due to trading psychology. So keep that in mind throughout this presentation, throughout your trading. Uh, it's all about trading psychology. Now generally the more times a price hits a support or a resistance, the stronger it becomes because of that trading psychology. Then it's very important to recognize that if a support gets broken, that it might actually switch into a resistance. So keep that in mind. Also, it's very important to recognize that support and resistance is not just a simple price. It's, it's a range of prices, so keep that in mind. All right, so let's begin to talk about how to identify supports and resistances. The first way, the most basic way, and arguably the best way are psych levels, round key numbers. See two charts on your screen right now. At the bottom left is the Australian dollar versus the US dollar, a hitting exact parity $1 multiple times. That's obviously a round key number. Uh, on the top right, you have the Euro versus US dollar. It hits 130 multiple times. Again, a round key number. Why does this work? Because new retail traders like to place their limit orders at nice round fun numbers. So take advantage of that. Think like an institution and beat them. So generally you can place your uh, buys just above the round number when your sells just below. The more round the number, the better. Kind of use some common sense and definitely take a look at the order book to see if this is holding true. You can see the orders. You can see these new traders uh, placing a lot of of their uh, buys and sells right around these key numbers. But just keep in mind institutions and whales and big traders that can actually pull orders uh, from the book and kind of trick you into uh, trading around the round key number when there really isn't support or resistance there. So just keep that in mind. So the next method we're gonna look at, multiple touches at the same price. Here you see Eli Lilly trying to break through about $75 on the ceiling with a resistance, about 60 with the floor or support. Touches multiple times. You cannot draw your horizontal line until it hits at least two, generally three times. So uh, please be very cautious when it comes to that. Uh, the key here though, these lines are horizontal. Horizontal lines are much stronger than diagonal lines. So let's jump into what a diagonal line is. This uh, general trend line. So you are plotting multiple, say higher highs or higher lows or lower lows together into a straight line, but this line is diagonal. So in the chart you see here on your screen, you have multiple higher lows and the trader drew a diagonal line uh, you know, linking them together. Now this is a good, you can see it certainly respected this line in this case. However, remember trading psychology, the more complex the methodology is, the less new traders that are going to know about it and the less likely it will be respected. Something to keep in mind here are, do you draw your lines including wicks or without wicks? If you're just learning, just pick a method with or without and just stick with it. If you're more advanced, I'd recommend diving into the wick. So as an example, if you have a daily candlestick and you see a big wick, jump into that wick, drill down into smaller time frames. Did that wick form in a matter of five minutes and just a few orders? Or was that wick really 23 hours of the day? And understanding and diving into it will help you uh, get a more complete picture of the price action. So as an example, if it was just a five minute wick, I wouldn't include it. But if it was trading in that wick for 23 hours, I would include it. 
Moving averages is another uh, slightly more complex way of determining supports and resistances. Uh, similar to diagonal lines, except a little bit more complex with moving averages. Uh, we have simple and exponential moving averages. If you want to learn how to calculate them, check out my video. But the reality here is they're a bit more difficult to calculate. Uh, new and retail traders might not even have them on their charts, so they're much less likely to be respected. And if we're going to utilize uh, moving averages for floors and ceilings, I'd certainly recommend using simple moving averages and pretty basic uh, time horizons, like a 20-day moving average or a 50-day moving average. Don't pick 37-day moving averages because no one else is going to be looking at that. And generally, you know, those retail and new traders uh, won't be respecting that level. A more advanced way of determining floors and ceilings or supports and resistances via the PBV chart or the price by volume chart. This identifies the prices where the most trading activity occurred. It's irrespective of time. So traditional volume charts, you see the volume on the X or the left to right axis. Here you see the trading activity or the volume on the vertical uh, up to down axis. So what you could do here is you can see and identify quite clearly what prices the most trading activities has occurred at. And here you can see the bottom portion of two big bars that actually formulates your support. There's a lot of activity occurring you know, at those prices, so they might be respected a bit more when price uh, tries to test it again. And the same on the resistance side. You can see the next couple big bars are around $26, $27 and that price would become your resistance. Now I think it's pretty important to try to confirm your support and resistance. Now, ideally, you've utilized multiple methods and say a key psych level plus a uh, horizontal line and a moving average all confirm the same price for support or resistance. Well, I would take it another step further and try to confirm it via this method, just using a traditional chart. And what you can do is see when the price challenged your support or resistance. When it challenged that level, take a look at volume. Did the volume spike? If the volume spiked when it's challenging that level, that tells you that other traders are respecting that price. That's certainly a, a very key metric. If the volume's low at your lines, then no one else is really paying attention to it, and it might not hold in the future. You need to be aware of what I call stop hunts. There's a few different terms here, but this basically means that there's a very common support and resistance line. So think $100 for a stock. There's a lot of activity around that. So you place your stop loss just below $100. You figure, hey, if it breaks 100 bucks, uh, there's not much protection below. That's sound, right? That makes a lot of sense. But what big traders, institutions can do, they can force the price below via just big orders, or they can withdraw their orders at the key number, pushing the price below, triggering all these stops just below the key price or the key floor or support. And this is what's called a stop hunt. So the key here is to recognize supports and resistances are zones. Now there's no way to avoid getting stop hunted all the time. That's just, just the reality. But what you can do is recognize their zones, recognize the volatility of the asset, and place your stop losses just below uh, the support zone or just above the resistance zone depending if you're long or short but that's the key recognize the volatility of the asset and the zone of the support or resistance if the volatility is very high then your zone might be a little bit bigger and you want to place that stop loss uh, a little bit further away than what you would generally expect so I gave you guys a bunch of different methods to come up with supports and resistances. So which ones are my favorite? Which ones do I feel work the best? 
And here's my list. So first, sight levels are generally respected the most. Uh, then horizontal touches. Then I prefer the price by volume. Price by volume chart uh, certainly advanced, so it's a little bit less trading psychology and a little bit more science involved, which I personally like. And then moving average and diagonal trends are the least likely to be respected uh, just because uh, from a trading psychology standpoint, there's not as many newer or retail traders taking a look at that. But the key, more important than anything, even though psych levels are number one on my list here, you want to have multiple methods confirming a similar support and resistance zone. And that's what you see here on this chart right here. You have the price by volume, uh, you know, giving you the 40 to $42 zone, but then you also see multiple touches right there, right? And then $40 is a round key number as well. So that $40 mark, if you're building a support here or a floor, would be a pretty solid number to pick. All right, guys, so if you enjoyed this support and resistance video, certainly subscribe, follow me on Twitter, comment, do whatever you can to, uh, to keep this channel going. It's all in your hands, and hope, hopefully I'm helping you guys out a little bit. Uh, you know, good luck trading out there. Good luck uh, building your supports and resistances, and thanks. Take care.